I'm a naturopath. I work with Lai. Um, we uh, work, work in the clinic Vibe Natural Health and we have our um, run our own practices. Um, uh, I suppose you might be wondering what a naturopath could sort of bring to the conversation about emotional eating. Um, and we take a whole body approach and like as, um, as Lai does as well. Um, but we look at the root causes of what could possibly be triggering emotional eating. So um, it could be, you know, I kind of think about psychology as there's a biological component and there could, you could be lacking in some kind of nutrient or it could be mood or um, boredom. You know, there's lots of things that could be going on. So I, I hope to cover a lot of those topics in this discussion today. Yeah, great. Yeah, well, I, I've got um, like I've got like pages of it, and this, this is something we can probably talk about all day because <laughs> we're so passionate about what we do. So I thought, yeah, we just sort of talk a little bit about what is emotional eating, mm-hmm. and um, and I, I mentioned a bit earlier while I um I was on a bit you know, waiting for you is that yeah. to me, emotional eating is uh, eating to feed the emotions versus the body. And there was Absolutely. such a big difference. And so I was talking a little bit about before with um, when I was a PT and I was doing the bodybuilding, how my whole function around eating was purely uh, to get the nutrients into me, just yeah. functional eating. It was just to get the nutrients. I needed to hit those macros and that was it. Yeah, mm-hmm. so that was, you know, I didn't enjoy it because a lot of the food I had was very bland and tasteless and it was repetitive and boring. But I had to put that aside. So at that particular time, yeah, that's that's that was the relationship that I formed with yeah. food. So yeah, very functional component. Yeah. And I suppose um in my own personal experience, I've ha- I'm a stress eater. So when I'm super stressed, it's like I can eat a whole bag of licorice bullets and not even think about it. So yeah, there's okay. I, there's many different reasons why why we do this. Um and yeah, it's a, I guess we hope to give you guys some tools and perhaps some tips and things that we're going to share with you today. Yeah, yeah, awesome. And I was just explaining before, um, Georgia, that one of the things that um, I see certainly with my clients is that when they um, have a negative emotion and it's triggered, one of the things that they want to do is move away from that pain, that discomfort, mm-hmm. and go straight mm-hmm. towards something that's pleasurable. And for a lot of people, it's food, and it's usually okay. something sweet fatty, salty, processed, <laughs> because they want that quick fix. They want that quick burst of those dopamine hits to say, okay, now I feel better. Absolutely. And that is is also your brain screaming out saying, I need glucose. You need to give me something to get through this. Mm, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And and I think we were having a discussion the other day and I was saying that when we, certainly with sugar, when we go for that quick fix, and it gives us that energy boost, it's actually mm-hmm. shrinking our brain and making our waist <laughs> wider. <laughs> yeah, so it's doing the, the exact thing we don't want to do because what are one of the things that people come and see us about is, you know, excess weight. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. And I love seeing people for um, helping them with their weight because it's not, um, there's so many different reasons mm. why um, we might be carrying extra weight and emotional eating or not eating at the right times or the right types of foods is definitely one of those reasons. Yes, yeah, for sure. And certainly from uh, what I do about, when we talk about the root cause is that um, with hypnotherapy, when I get clients that come and say, oh, you know, can you just hypnotise me? So I stop doing this and I stop doing that. It does work for you know, a certain period of time. However, if we don't get to the root cause of what's driving their behaviour, mm-hmm. what happens in our brain is those neural pathways that we're trying to, you know, dim and grow new ones. If we're not getting to the root cause, they keep getting re-triggered. And then they'll just grow back. And if we don't go back to that same behaviour, making it even worse, we'll form another unresourceful behaviour. So that's why, you know, what we love, what, what we do at the clinic is literally getting to the root cause so that we get to what where, it, where it's happening, where it's, you know, anchored itself. And that's what we work with. And that's when you get lasting results. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So with the emotional eating then, Georgia, what's, like I, I spoke a little about, um, you know, the mind. Yeah, what do you typically get when, with clients that come in to see you? Yeah, um, so I, I suppose there's definitely, obviously for me also there's a mind component, but then I look also for um, people might not even realise they are emotional eating. So I'm sort of looking and, and asking questions around if there have been any change in habits Um particularly when there's more stress in people's lives, Um, eating when they're not hungry or, um, you know, when you're already full, you've already had a meal and then you go reach for something else. Mm. Um, 
you know, uh, like I mentioned about my own personal experience, like eating um, when stressed. So I'm uh, a study eater. <laughs> um, yeah. Eating to soothe your feelings, like when something bad has happened that you weren't happy with the outcome. And just, I guess, like you mentioned before, that sort of dopamine, reaching for that dopamine reward. Um, to sort of soothe your feelings mm. and and I guess also using food as a reward and that's something that you know I think parents we're, we're really trying to move away from is using uh, foods as rewards. Yeah that that's when you think back when you say soothing and as a reward that's right back from childhood. Yeah absolutely. Yeah yeah and uh, it's interesting that you know particularly with uh, soothing when we're born and we're hungry or mm. upset we quite often get given food, don't we? Yeah, here you go, have something to eat, you know. Mm, that's right. And and certainly um, cultures, you know, certain cultures really promote that. I, certainly, I know for me with you know, my Vietnamese background, it's all based around food. But you know what's really interesting is that, you know, people eat right to because they're sad or they experience a negative emotion, so they eat something so they want to feel happy. Mm -hmm. But people also can eat when they're in a happy state already. Like, for instance, you know, certain cultures where, you know, it, it's, it's a good, like weddings, Yeah, you know, it's all around food, isn't it? Everyone, what does everyone talk about? They talk about the bride's dress and, you know, th those things, but everyone always talks about the food. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so food is such a big component in, in our lives, not just for survival, mm -hmm. but just, you know, in so many other areas where it extends to, you know, for instance, yeah. you know, cultural um, ceremony. <laughs> well, and also um, uh, in office environments, birthday cake mm -hmm. almost every week, you know. <laughs> I know. And it's almost like people dread birthdays coming up because it's like, no, I've got to have another birthday cake and I'm being so good. But, you know, mm -hmm. yeah, so I guess that comes back to, again, setting boundaries and, you know, really you know, sticking to, you know, cre you know, creating what that boundary is so that you can stick to what your goals are. And Absolutely. And around that, the boundaries is exactly, but also, um, not being in a position where you will um, break your um, patterns or your goals, mm. not being over hungry or undernourished mm. to actually reach that point where you are sort of, um, I'll, I'll just have cake for lunch today. <laughs> yes, yes. And then we think by, you know, having the cake for lunch today, missing a, a proper meal, mm. right, that, oh, well, those calories, will, yeah, they're okay. But in actual fact, certainly when I was doing uh, the bodybuilding, the, your macronutrients, your, your breakup was what's so important, you know, because really what's a cake? High in fat, sugar, processed, you know. Um, so, yes, it's calorie, but it's it's calorie crap. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that's what makes the difference. So um, so what are some of the signs that you see with, with people coming through for emotional eating? Mm -hmm. um, I guess it's kind, I kind of um, – find that in my line of questioning like um people I mean I, I feel like everybody sort of knows what healthy food looks like I think the government has done a fantastic job yeah. of showing us what a healthy plate should look like um it's really when I guess when my patients tell me I know what to eat but then after dinner I go and raid the pantry and I eat everything inside <laughs> Um, so things like that. And I guess also when people, the main reason that they'll come to see me is because they've started gaining weight and they're not sure why. And then we look together, look at the whole diet, what's going on um, and what people are actually eating mm -hmm. and then try to come up with some plans and goals around, um, you know, perhaps having something on board before they go and reach for that um, pack of Tim Tams or whatever it happens to be. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, things like when people are really stressed, I I ask questions around that when there's some a major life event and they're angry or sad. Mm. Um, so, yeah. Um, yeah, definitely. And and I, and I have a very similar line of questioning as well. And typically when we have those emotions that get triggered, they're anchored to an event. Mm -hmm. okay. and, yeah. um, and the subconscious and quite commonly um just everyday life can just sort of trigger yeah. you know it's kind of this underlying stress these days it's not we're not running from the saber-toothed tiger anymore but yeah. there's constant deadlines and underlying stress financial pressures on people 
um, that can trigger emotions or trigger negative emotions and lead to emotional eating. Mm, yeah, there's a lot, isn't there? The, exi- the the list just gets longer and longer and longer of what those stress triggers are. Yeah, yeah. And and I guess certainly coming out of COVID, uh, one of the the areas that I'm noticing with a lot of people is um, not having resilience. Yeah, yeah, and having those coping mechanisms, mm-hmm. yeah, and still reaching for you know those. And it's not always just food; it's other things, you know, like other like smokes and and other things but typically with food food's one of those things that um we can grab literally anywhere Mm -hmm. and and advertising really promotes you know everywhere you look there's just fast foods and yeah you know it's very clever marketing and um and so it's almost like food is one of those go-tos absolutely yeah we know it (laughs) yeah it's comforting (laughs) Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and I guess, um, you know, we can do a lot of change a lot of our behaviours, but you know, and, and this is why we're so passionate about the root cause of things, because, you know, even going back as far as childhood, you know, it's not until about the age of eight that you know, as children, we start to understand what emotions are up until then, all we do is experiencing them. Absolutely. Yeah. And as you said before, you know, when we, we get hurt or something's happened, or we get called a name or something, we have a fight or something, you know, we're taught when they're like, well, just come on, come and have a biscuit. Yeah. Yeah. And then that forms a behaviour, right, that stays with us right through. Yeah. yeah. And we don't know any other way. So we therefore we're not becoming resourceful. Mm-hmm. How do we change that? And in our brains, the neurosynaptis there is created this super highway where, bang, that's the behaviour, that's my go-to, that's my default. And you don't even give it a second thought bang, you're just reaching into the pantry and <laughs> then you just have, oh, I'll have some of that, I'll have some of that, go in the fridge, I'll have some of that. Yeah. And before you know it, you've literally, as you said, you know, started a couple of biscuits but had the whole packet. <laughs> yeah, it's that, and that binge eating, yeah. yeah. And then the, and the, the thing about it, though, is that after you've had it, you feel worse. That's right. <laughs> exactly right. And then the guilt and the pain that comes with that can lead to it becoming a habit. Yeah. So it's like you, you're back to square one but even back further because yeah. you've just done this behaviour mm-hmm. and you feel, as you say, all those other emotions come in and compound the original emotion that triggered it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So what are some of the things that you do to help your clients? Um, I really love helping people with diet plans. So I love sort of making sure that there's tactic in place so that you don't like to, to sort of stem it like um what's it called stem the bleeding put a band like a bit of a band-aid stop um stop you from reaching for things because you've already got a plan in place mm. but I also look for those underlying causes so I might look at people's blood chemistry so look at their blood test results and check things like their blood sugar regulation or even um other nutrient needs because when you're when you need nutrition and this is nothing to do with the amount of food that you're eating but when you need nutrition the body will still tell you that you're hungry and you need to keep eating yeah um checking that things are replete people have got enough you know b12 and iron and things on board Mm. but then i also look at um hormonal health so i either do testing for hormones or i you um i use my like uh, clinical case taking to ascertain how the hormones are um, responding it's quite um it's quite simple for women we have a monthly report card um but also there's lots of questioning around men that can be implicated in the hormonal cascade as well yeah yeah yeah, and also just about like their emotional health and looking at energy levels and you know um i guess it's really about putting tactics into place about how we can yeah, absolutely. And it's interesting that you mentioned before about, um, you know, it's, it's not, it's what we're eating. It's getting the nutrient, the body needs the nutrient. And mm-hmm. quite often, and I don't know whether you can relate to this, but quite often, you know, I was just bought, seeking, uh, talking to someone over on the weekend and he actually come up to me and he said to me, lie, you know, um, for some reason or other, um, you know, I don't, I'm not taking any supplements, but I'm just feeling a little bit achy in the body. And, you know, I, I sort of thought, have you got any tips for me? So I said to him, are you taking any fish oils? And he said, you know what, I'm not. He said, but just lately I've been craving fish. Oh, wow. 
And so what you just said, you know, the body will actually send you signals of what it needs and it doesn't need another cake (laughs) or another biscuit, you know. But But in saying that, that is sometimes the brain screaming out because it does need sugar. It needs glucose. It does. It does, yeah. If you are finding that is happening regularly, it might be something to check out, like definitely to have a look at how your blood sugar is actually responding and how much stress you're actually under. <laughs> yes, that's right. And also it's sleep. I mean, that, we can use that a topic for another day, but, you know, mm-hmm. when we're not getting sleep, enough sleep, and we're, we're lacking in energy, what do we do? Mm. Yeah, we go, we go straight to an energy drink or, <laughs> yeah, you know, and it just perpetuates the cycle. Yeah, you know, or we go for, you know, another cup of coffee and, and yeah. So so one of the things that um, I do is, uh, and I did this even as a personal trainer, one of the mm-hmm. very first things I used to say to my clients and, and even now is a food diary. And I always said to them, if you can do a week, you know, at least seven days, fantastic, but at least do a, um, a couple of weekdays and the weekend because we change our habits you know, Absolutely. when we had days off and when we're working. And um, and because quite often I used to get this all the time. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, I actually eat okay. My, my food's okay. I eat quite healthy. Mm-hmm. And I go, okay, yeah, great. Well, let, let's see what it is that you actually put into your mouth. And I want everything yeah. that you put in your mouth written down. And then they come back to me. And isn't it interesting to see what they put down? And they come back and they go, oh, actually, I didn't realise I had so much of this. And, yeah, yeah. so that awareness in itself mm-hmm. you know, creates you to actually look and think, wow, all right, now I know what I'm doing and yeah. what I can do better, mm-hmm. what I need to do. Yeah, so it's yeah. definitely for me one of the first tips that, that I say to people is to get a food diary and start writing down everything that you put in your mouth. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and people um, don't come to see people like you and I because they know how to do it they come to see people you and I because they need help and that's what our job is to do so you know I, I guess even when in the past when you might have tried diets or detox diets there's a lot of emotion around changing your habits um, there's fear and anxiety and you can feel a lot more emotional than usual and that um, not doing it you know with help or with guidance or even accountability sometimes can be important um you kind of you can be more emotional than usual um when you're making these changes so that that can also contribute to um not being successful with diet plans and yeah i love that you said that and it's so true because people say i know what i've got to do my conscious mind is telling me i know what to do however the subconscious is back here the other 96 percent is going no no you're not yeah Yeah. this is what i hear quite commonly i'm trying so hard to be healthy but i keep sabotaging myself that's right and that's how they've ended up on in our offices because it's um or in an appointment with us because that's um that's their experience. Yeah, because that conscious mind, like I said, it's only 4%. That's 4% willpower. That's why you only go so far because you know what to do. I'll do it for a week. Mm-hmm. You know, and at the end of that week, something happens. As you mentioned, we get triggered. The emotion comes up. We don't know what to do about that. And then we just revert back to you know, our default, which is the subconscious going, see, I told you. Yes. <laughs> what always happens you know, you're not dealing with this. Here we go again. And then, yeah, we're just getting into that cycle. And so you're absolutely right. A lot of people do know what to do. There's so much free information out there, isn't there? Absolutely. It's actually overwhelming if you get out there and have a look, which I'm sure most people probably have been on the internet lately um, or Facebook. And yeah, it can be quite overwhelming. And everybody's trying to sell you something different, Mm. you know, a new book, a new way to do things. But it's really about um, your own personal individual um, makeup, your own biology. And Absolutely. Lai and I, we look at everybody as an individual. There's not so one cookie cutter way to make things work <laughs> for you. And that's so true, Georgia, because I know particularly when people come in and they see me, I talk to them about their map of the world. Mm-hmm. They've lived a different experience to everyone else. So it's great. Uh, there's, there's so much free stuff, self-help stuff out there, courses, things that you can do. However, it's very generalised. Absolutely. And while certain elements will work, mm-hmm. however, it's getting into your specific yeah. issue, struggle, whatever that is for you and unpacking that for you. Yeah. So I often you just describe that, those diets um, and blog bloggers as that what they're 
selling worked for that N equals one population of one. It worked for yeah. them. That's great, but it might not work for everybody. So absolutely, and the, and the the different factor in that is uh, is in here, you know, and how your body and this is is connecting and working together. And if yeah. they're out of balance and it's not working, well, then how is all this stuff out here really going to get you the lasting result that you want? Yeah. So I, I love that we, we get into here and we start to get them to reconnect and look at themselves as a whole, yeah. an individual. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 So I love that. So what's other, what's another tip that you, you could give? Yeah. So um, I guess think about thinking about at the time when you are craving something, think about if you are actually satisfying a physical hunger, like is, have I just eaten or did I eat the, did I eat a breakfast and was it delicious? And if it was just two hours ago, just think about how good that breakfast was and you might realise that you don't need that muffin that you're just about to buy with your coffee. Yeah. So thinking about that physical hunger or is it an emotional hunger? Is it because you're just there and the sugar is available or do you are you tired or you're actually feeling stressed or emotional about something yeah. else entirely? Yeah, exactly. I love that. And that's that coming back to having that diary, understanding mm -hmm. what your triggers are and being that's mindful it. of what yeah. you're putting in because you can't <laughs> change anything unless you get awareness. That's the first step to change is awareness. Mm -hmm. and, and I love that. So it's sitting back and going, all right, so do I really need that right now? Why mm -hmm. am I feeling and, and what's happening that I'm going for that? Yeah. Because I'm feeling, mm, all right, yeah. So it's really bringing that awareness because if you don't know what's going on, how can you change it? Absolutely. You have to, yeah, you have to learn what your triggers are. And like I was explaining before, I probably went four years of studying before I realized what I was doing with the um, stress eating. It was like, oh, that's what's going on. <laughs> Light bulb moment. Yeah, um, yeah. Recognizing what your triggers are and having some tactics in around to actually help manage that. So for example, I now use like a herbal tea or I just, um, I reach, I, I do that thing where I think about the meal that I had for lunch or whatever it happened to be mm. um, and to remind myself that I'm not actually hungry. Yes. Yes, that's right. And, and, and if we're eating the right foods, mm -hmm. right, our hunger is more controlled because of our blood sugar level, as you know. Yeah. Um, and that's and also part of that for me is also taking regular breaks. Yeah. So that's something I never used to do. And that was game changing. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Particularly since a lot of us over COVID have had to set up work from home. Mm -hmm. So we're not actually going out. So it's, you know, trying to find that balance and that space of one minute you're at work, but actually you're at home, but you've got to mm -hmm. separate that. Yeah. And how much easier it is to go in the kitchen at home. <laughs> You know, and reach for something like, uh, what did I hear most of last year was, oh, I started eating a lot of bread and jam. <laughs> like it yes. wasn't even good foods. It was just and, bread and jam. And what about alcohol? I mean, that, again, that's, an, that's another, another subject. But the, the sales of alcohol went up. Yeah. And when you think about it, like Coles and Woolworths, all these supermarkets, they, they did phenomenal trade, right, because we right. couldn't eat out, so we had to eat at home. So yeah. for a lot of people that aren't great home chefs, I mean, we, I, I, I love enjoy cooking but for a lot of people it's a chore yeah yeah and if they're emotionally being triggered mm -hmm. how is their motivation to sit there and cook themselves a healthy meal yeah yeah yeah, yeah. then it's not going to do that so they reach for the fast food call you know uber because a lot of um businesses i, I know a lady that's got a, a cafe in, mm -hmm. in brisbane and she did really well over covid because her uber <laughs> sales went yeah. through the roof yeah. <laughs> yeah, she said, instead of people coming in, she said, people were just getting all these orders because it was so convenient. Mm -hmm. um, and it was also a coping mechanism. Yes. Yeah, because a lot of people feeling that isolation, feeling alone, mm -hmm. feeling fear. And so what are they reaching for? Food, takeaway food, easy, accessible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and oftentimes, um, and that's coming back to that sort of planning that I do with people, um, is not is like ordering food when you're already really hungry. <laughs> Even yes, I know. Isn't that the number one golden rule? You never go grocery shopping on an empty stomach. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've done. I've been guilty of doing that, and it's it's ridiculous, mm -hmm. absolutely ridiculous. So yeah, so isn't that a, a big driver? The yeah. hunger, but I love that. Is really asking yourself, 
Uh, and this is interesting because when I was doing the, um, the competing, mm-hmm. um, we were so strict and obsessive on our timing of food. Mm-hmm. And, and what it did teach me was that every three, three and a half hours, I, I could understand that the hunger. Yeah. I wasn't necessarily um, wanting to eat, but I had to because I had mm-hmm. to fuel my body because um, um, portions were very controlled. Mm-hmm. But it taught me how to understand the trigger of hunger and when my body needed fuel as opposed to just eating because I was bored yeah, or eating because I was upset. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that there are definitely different feelings that a lot of people just can't differentiate. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And that's okay. when they start to form those unresourceful um, yeah. habits and those behaviours. Yeah. Yeah. So I love that about focusing on also on the thought that's going in your head, you know, and asking yourself, you know, do I really need this? And a lot of people um, particularly like using affirmations. Mm, yeah. Um, yeah. And affirmations are brilliant. They're really powerful. However, I'm going to challenge people to take it one step further. So you know how sometimes we might say to ourselves something like, um, look, ah, oh, gosh, I need this food right now um, as I know it's going to make me happier. So as soon as you say that and you bring awareness to it and you understand what you're saying, that self-talk, then you flip it straight away and then you can say, speak to yourself in a far more resourceful way and say something along the lines of, I could do better than this. I don't need to have this food right now. I've got another way to cope with this emotion. Yeah. And as we, as we, that's what we do. We give people resources and coping mm-hmm. mechanisms that work with them with what they want as opposed against them. Yeah. <laughs> And I certainly know for me with the subconscious, it, it, it's about, you know, um, really getting down to that root cause of what the trigger is. And as I said, a lot of the times it's way back in childhood. What could be past relationships that we've had? It could be bullying that we've experienced. You know, it, it may not come through every time you get that trigger, like blatantly come into your conscious mind, but it's there being triggered. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and that's what um, I love working with people uncovering what what that is yeah so what other tips have you got um so i mentioned i talked a bit about blood glucose um because the brain does need the you like it needs fuel that is its only fuel Mm. um or glucose pardon me but um i guess yeah we've also talked a bit about sleep so i i definitely question around sleep and try to get um people to get better quality sleep so when you're feeling fatigued that is also your brain also kind of screaming out for fuel um but that sensation can then make you feel stressed and anxious uh helping to manage um stress and anxiety so naturopaths we have these lovely herbs that um we call a heard about these <laughs> yeah adrenal tonics and adaptogens so they're fabulous um fabulous resources not long term but they're great short term to sort of help you to manage the stress they just help you to adapt that's why they're called adaptogens mm. um and those those can be things like it would depend what the person in front of me is sort of presenting with what I would go reach for. But with Thania, which is ashwagandha, is a beautiful herb um, for adapting to stress. And then things like licorice or um, romania are beautiful. They're our adrenal. Licorice or licorice root. Licorice root. Um, right. It yeah. doesn't taste like licorice bullets, oh, but it's that. a little bit. <laughs> a little bit sweet. But yeah. I've had licorice tea. Yeah, licorice tea is fabulous. Mm, that was lovely. Yeah. Wonderful adrenal tonic. And um, I think also because it tastes a little bit sweet, it can sort of, um, it can soothe you with for that emotional side of it. So you're actually having something that's sweet. So it can yeah. kind of trick the brain a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And that's what hypnosis does. Mm-hmm. It, 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 it's it's and that's why I, I, I get to the root cause. And um, when people come to me and they go, oh, can you give me some hypnosis just to, you know, beat my sugar craving or to, to you know, stop me from eating, you know, these foods and, and whatnot. Um, and what happens there is that it's like a Band-Aid, as you said before. Yeah. And, it, and if we do not get to what's driving the behaviour, okay, mm-hmm. it will come up again. It, and it may not, as I said, come up in that same uh, habit, but it, something else will form because it's a coping mechanism. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, like I always say to people that if we don't, heal some of these things that have developed from us way back in our past Mm -hmm. we actually bury them alive and they get rooted in our subconscious Mm -hmm. and our subconscious is what drives our behavior yeah Yeah. and uh, that's why i'm so passionate about it 
yeah. so so passionate about you know um getting back into the subconscious and and for some people it can be quite uh confronting because they think oh what's going to come out it's not going to bring out anything that it it's it doesn't need help with mm-hmm. that it doesn't that it knows that hey i need to deal with this because i know um on the other side of it i'll be much so much better yeah mm-hmm. so you know it, it's 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 a case of working with what you've already got in there um and tapping into that for your own well-being mm-hmm. yeah and and that's what i love what we do and um yeah, it is it is and you know like we've had some amazing um you know results you know from from clients what's one of yours that you can come to mind about one of the results that you've had with a client yeah so i think um I've recently been working with somebody who um, found out they 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 came to me because they knew they had some an iron deficiency, but the iron supplements weren't helping. Um, and then in the in the course of my case taking, um, she did say, "I have some emotional eating problems. Um, how can I manage? How can can you help me with that?" Mm-hmm. And I. I, I, I helped her with a meal plan um, because everybody who sees me gets a meal plan. But um, for her in particular, it was making sure she got a lot of her protein and larger a larger meal at breakfast time because her big problem was that she'd get to about 3.30 and then she would just crash. Oh, and gosh, we tired. all know that too well. Yeah. yeah and she wouldn't even be able to talk to her partner. She was just so tired and she that's when she'd just start eating sugar and then feeling bad or like buying a burger on the way home feeling bad about everything that she was doing to herself and she just felt like she was sabotaging herself mm. um when we sort of flipped it and we bought more protein and not just um that's not like a steak for breakfast by the way like it was actually like you know a variety of plant-based proteins into her daily um dailies uh she started to respond a lot better and she found that she was able to um, not have, yeah, not reach for those. Actually, it was the, the thing was the 3.30-itis. That's what her biggest um, barrier was. Once she started, mm. she couldn't stop. So yeah. it was kind of, yeah, we used some herbs. We fixed up the iron through a gut health protocol because iron isn't just about eating iron. It's about how well you're absorbing iron. So yes. she needed a bit of help with her gut. But we also discovered that she had candida and um, not through, it was actually not through any of my, um, we, I wasn't going down that pathway at all, but she had itchy ears, which we were treating with. Um, so we were doing this gut health protocol and treating her immune system. And when she got the ENT to look in, he said, oh, you have candida. (laughs) So we went back and looked at all the reasons why she was craving sugar and we've put it back down to it was a fungal overgrowth. Um, Like it wasn't even her own brain. It was the the fungal overgrowth that was screaming out for sugar. Wow. That's amazing, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how is she now? She's great. She's doing really, really well. Um, she still contacts me every now and again to get um, some new recipes, which I'm really more than happy to pass on. Um, but we did an anti-candida diet. So we just, um, like, it's that's just a very low sugar um, diet, a low um, in simple carbs and low in, actually low in carbs, mm. and starved the fungal overgrowth. And then she felt great again. She's like, yeah. now I don't have the ear problem. I don't have... Um, the cravings anymore so something as simple as looking at you know what's really going on and getting to the root cause might not even be you (laughs) well that's the thing and I mean um, people like that you hear them time and time again go from diet to diet to diet to diet don't they and they download an app go on this diet they, you know, they go on the internet and they grab this diet Mm -hmm. however as I said they work but if you've got some issues happening um, that that particular app or that particular you know thing on the internet's not addressing all it is is a band-aid absolutely yeah and that's why it is so important that you deal with you as an individual and get some someone that can investigate and help you find out what's really going on Mm -hmm. with your mind and your body 
know, what's happening there that, you know, we can actually look at and, and then, you know, go, right, this is what's happening. Let's make some changes here. It's so mm-hmm. important. Yeah. And I've, I've got a client that um, very similar in the sense that um, overeating, you know, and, and overeating, you know, the wrong foods, you know, gaining weight. And it's interesting when we, we dig in there and we uncover, you know, the behaviour, what's driving it. Um, at work, this particular person um, wanted to step up in their career. Mm-hmm. And to do that, this person, um, this client had to actually do more speaking, right? Had to get up and speak. And that petrified this person. You know, it's like, oh, I can't do that. You know, I, I really struggle. Even when we're in groups, I really struggle. And I know it's my turn. My turn's coming up and I'm getting anxious. And, and I can't speak up, okay? So to calm down, go straight out there and reach for a sugar, right? It's either an energy drink or for something sweet. You know, it, it's, I, I, you know, just to calm myself down. Mm -hmm. okay and then it's going home and being a closet eater yeah Yeah. you know it's going home and sort of like on the way home you know grabbing a packet of chips or grabbing something it's you know then she knows that it's not healthy for her but it's like I've I've got to calm myself I've got to you know get rid of this horrible feeling that I'm feeling because that was a really bad day Mm -hmm. and so what happens then is um you know over time you know you everything starts to fall apart, putting on weight. That's one of the first things is where you feel it, but you start to see that you're putting on the weight. And what that does is just, you know, forms depression and, you know, all these other negative emotions. So what happened was when I go in there and and we we start to uncover, you know, what's driving the behaviour, it went right back, and this is how powerful the subconscious is, it went right back to when she was a very, very young girl Mm -hmm. and she wasn't allowed to speak. She had to keep a secret. Yeah. So um, because this particular secret had to do something with a family member. And so she had to keep this secret. So and she had forgotten about that. I mean, this is a woman well into her 40s, completely forgotten about that time in her life. So therefore, what was she doing? She's been had to suppress things. And she felt guilt because she knew things, but she wasn't allowed to say. She wasn't allowed to speak. So therefore, how did that affect her in her everyday life? When it come to work, and it was her time to speak. She couldn't speak because she had this pattern, this programming, this negative influence way back from childhood that prevented her from being able to speak up. So when we worked on that and we cleared that and she was able to heal the uh, the inner child Mm -hmm. to merge with who she is now, to grow into the person that she is, to feel confident, to grow her self-esteem and to be able to speak, yeah, and so doing that, she was able to understand what some of those triggers were. She was able to feel confident in herself. And then one of the things um, particularly that I work with clients is that they say, oh, can you make me feel confident or make me feel, you know, um, that I, 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 I uh, am motivated. What happens particularly when we, people who want to come, who see me about weight loss is losing the weight Right. Yes, there is a confidence. You feel confident, right? However, you've got to go through a journey to get there. And on that journey is about being the person, right, to lose the weight. Because if you're beating yourself up thinking, oh, you know, look, I'm not good enough and, you know, and all these uh, self-sabotaging thoughts and things in your head, you know, you're never going to do the things that you need to do to lose the weight, to look after yourself, to be kind to yourself. So it's it's kind of like um, a, a reverse thought pattern because in actual fact what they're doing, they're confident at beating themselves up. They're confident at doing all the wrong things. It's just now it's about flipping that and using that same confidence that they're doing the wrong things to do the right things because when you feel that you're deserving and you feel that you're, you're showing yourself kindness and compassion, you'll do those things. You, you'll, you know, how you give them the meal plans you actually follow those meal plans because you're feeling it mm-hmm. inside you to do it. Yeah. yeah. So when people say, you know, I know what to do, but it's just something's not happening, you know, yeah, it, it, it goes so much deeper that they don't even realise. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But it's all in there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's incredible. You're incredible, Lai. <laughs> oh, look, I, I love that. I don't know what's going to pop out for, for people, but it's <laughs> as you do, it's asking them the right questions and giving that safe space. Yeah. So that they can, you know, bring it out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because if it doesn't come out, then how do we transform that? How do we help them? Yeah, and that's why um, what we do is so so powerful because we're sitting down and we're really getting into 
now what those blocks are absolutely yeah yeah so you know that that's 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 why you know we, we love what we do <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. but if anyone's got any questions at all um you know because please you know pop it in the chat, reach out to um, Georgia or myself. We are at uh, the Vibe Natural Health Clinic at the Grange in Brisbane, but we're also, you know, online, you know, you can send us a message. Um, you know, there's so many things that uh, we can help you with specifically for you. Yeah. And that's the key. You know, it's not one size fits all. Yeah. If it was, life would be so much easier. <laughs> um, but, yeah, you know, we've all walked on different paths. We've all had different experiences. all view life differently as well. You know, when you can sit down and someone can really listen and get an understanding of what you're experiencing and really get back to where it started, where it come from, yeah. you know, that, that's, that's where, you know, we just can really help and make a difference. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so is there anything else you want to say? Okay. I thought I might end up with something that's a bit fun and a bit funny, actually. Um, so there's a little naturopathic party trick <laughs> that we um, we can pull out every now and again. There's a herb that you might have heard of it called Gymnema. It's Gymnema sylvestra, and that's um, its little party trick is it completely stops the, the, the taste of sugar. So you can drop some of the herb liquid herb onto your tongue and you can't taste sugar so you could eat you could eat a piece of chocolate and go oh that tastes like chocolate then you could drop the herb on your tongue and you taste the same chocolate and it would taste like ash in your mouth so that is a really handy little um i call it a party trick um yes. because it is a sugar destroyer so you, you there would be no point you wouldn't be getting that same dopamine hit once you had this herb on your tongue <laughs> Yeah, so it's almost repulsive, is it, when you put it on the yeah. tongue? Yeah, so so it just blocks that, yeah, that that flavor or that hit. Yeah, mm -hmm. ash. I have to say, I've never tried ash before, <laughs> so I can imagine it wouldn't be a nice taste in your mouth. It's like nothing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, like there's no point to this. It's just cardboard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So they're drops, and you can get them at the clinic. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. And we have to have a bit of an eighty twenty lifestyle. Like it can't all be you know, lettuce leaves. It has, you have to have some joy and fun with food as well. Absolutely. I know when I did meal plans for, for clients when I was PT, I uh, always put in, you know, midweek, during the week, weekends. I, I used to call them cheat meals yep. um, because if we do deprive ourselves and we just hang for it more, <laughs> it's just the way that we operate. It's like, you know, it's like a little child. Well, you can't tell me that. Yeah. And, you know, and then it goes and does exactly what, you know, it's told not to do. So it's the same with us, you know, in subconscious. Yeah, right. If we deprive ourselves, we actually um, give it more fuel to do that very thing that we don't want to do so yeah Absolutely. little bits and and as you know like when when people actually start to change and uh, their behaviors the taste buds start to change don't they mm -hmm. yeah and then they'll go to eat that same food but they can't eat the, the, the same amount of it anymore or maybe not at all because it's like i can't believe i used to eat that much oh yeah. i ate that yeah 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 because they're just changing so many different elements mm -hmm. you know really it's not meant to be hard but we make it hard for ourselves that's right. And I think that when you come and you get help from somebody like you or I, or a combination, and that can work beautifully, you're giving yourself the best chance to succeed and not just for the short term or how long a diet plan works, but it's a lifestyle then. It's not just. Yeah, absolutely. We're a couple of very passionate you know, ladies that love what we do and getting real results for people. Looking forward to it, Light. <laughs> awesome. All right. Thank you. Thank Have you. Have a great afternoon or great day. Bye. <laughs> Bye.